This is Claudia Russell with Cohasset Beacons. We're here with Larry Corthell, who's the branch manager for Hingham Institution Savings, as well as the president of the Cohasset Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Larry. Thanks. Good to be here, Claudia. So, Larry, why don't you tell us a little bit about this iconic building that we have here at the Hingham Institution of Savings? I think it's the prettiest building in Cohasset. So we've got the um, branch was originally Cohasset Savings Bank from 1898. And they ran here until 1995, and Hingham Savings acquired the building. And we've been running our Cohasset branch here since then. So there's only been two uh, locations or two companies here? Two banks, that's it. Two banks since, what is it, 1898? 1898. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> Very long time. So I hear that you've made some changes to the building recently. We spent the last year completely remodeling the building inside and out. So outside we've done painting, we've cleaned the brickwork up, the roof, um, we've done the marble over under the windows, and the windows are beautiful. They're about five feet wide. So if you picture this building when there was, you know, lamp oil, that's how it was. And um, we've just completed the entire interior. So. Wow. So why don't we go take a quick look inside and why don't you tell us a little bit about the entryway because this is a, sure. once again, it's a beautiful building to walk into. So it's all granite, granite steps. Um, the door is the original door from 1898 and there's the pillars. The same architect that did this building did the Pratt Library up on Main Street, which is now the Historical Society's headquarters. So you will see there's similarities between the two. but. Under the windows, above the windows, it's all unfinished marble. Um, there's an 1898 behind the flag in marble. And then the scroll work and all the woodwork is just exquisite. It's beautiful. It's a gorgeous building. Now, the Cohasset Historical Society, were they involved in the reconstruction work? No, we, got, we got some information from them as far as what the original colors were and things like that. Um, inside, we wanted to remodel. Uh, there was from... Cohasset Savings, there was a plywood floor with a rug on top and a big counter. So we've ripped all that down. We've built um, a conference room, an office. We've used oak, red oak hardwood throughout the building, cleaned up all the electrical. Um, the heat is original baseboard heating, forced hot water. We didn't change that. And um, it's just a classic building. Wow. You sound quite like the architect. You seems like no, do you know that. a lot about it? <laughs> I'm excited and I'm glad I'm here. It's a beautiful, beautiful building to spend your days in. All right. So let's let's go in and let's sure. take a look at what the building is like. So inside we're we're about ninety five percent of the way done. We're waiting on some paintings and window treatments. The new rug just came in Monday. It was installed on Veterans Day while we were closed. Um, so as you can see, there's no front counter. We got rid of that. It's two desks. When you walk in, you go to the desk on the left or the right. We're going to have a, a waiting area with some chairs and benches, a, a bench system. Um, the desks were all handcrafted. They're all solid cherry. Um, no screws. They're all built with dowels, sort of the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. One distinctive thing about these desks um, and when you look at them the wires run through the legs of the desk oh, wow. so there wow. are no wires visible there's no outlets or plugs visible they they look like they're just sitting on the floor but there's you know ethernet cables running through the legs power computer all that stuff but it's not you know visible um, we've got the main lobby area um, we've got a conference room we built and we're the, probably the only bank around that has a fireplace in the conference room. And the plan is we're going to probably put a gas log in. Right now it's a wood-burning fireplace. I'm not burning wood in there, so uh, we're going to have a gas log installed, and we're waiting on the table and chairs for the conference room. But there's some intricate details in that room also I'd like to show you. So this is going to be the conference room. Mm -hmm. This was an office. Um, it was sort of out of the way, and I couldn't see people coming in, and they couldn't see me, so we, we remodeled this. We ran with these windows throughout, so it's clear. The doors are clear, and it's probably the only bank around that has an actual working fireplace. <laughs> so the plan is to put a gas log in here, 
and you know as the sun goes down we can turn the flame on this will be a conference room for loan closings meetings things like that and um, it has its own marble bathroom and this would have been back in the Cohasset Savings days the bank president's office which is why it was sort of off to the side yeah. and he had the the fireplace and um, in the bathroom so was this the original fireplace back in the 1800s as well it's all original yep wow. yep wow that's beautiful very good yeah it's yeah. it's it's nice I've never burned anything in it and, and the last time we had a fire I think they had one in like 1998 they tried it out and it worked <laughs> but I don't trust it at this point until it runs gas yes. So let's look at that marble uh, bathroom. Now I'm curious about it. <laughs> oh, well, you can see the sink. There it is. <laughs> yep. it's, um, uh, uh, it's a nice, nice build. Everything is just solid, square. When the, when the guys came in to do the floors, they were just talking about how everything was straight. And nothing had to be really, you know, finagled to fit. It's, it's a very solid building. It's a all granite foundation stone. Down in the basement, it's almost like Red Lion Inn. You can see the, the stone work, and um, it's just, it's very solid. So, Fabulous building. So let's go talk a little bit about what your typical day is like. Sure. Sounds good. Um, this is a beautiful office. Uh, tell us, what, what um, is your typical day like? I usually get here around 7.30 and okay. check my email, finish up anything with, between the bank and the chamber, um, we open the branch at 8.30. One thing we try to do here is most banks close at 4 o'clock. We're open till 5. And we just find that's, you know, people coming home from work or if they're picking their son up at soccer practice, 4 o'clock's a little too early. So we, we close at 5, and we probably are the busiest from 4.30 to 5 o'clock every night. So it, it proves the point to be open. Um, so most of the time I'll have a, um, you know, my calendar laid out for, for meetings. I usually have at least a meeting a day, um, and I'll make sales calls and, and touch bases. I have some, I get the flexibility. For, for example, I've got a few merchants, um, in, one in Situate, one in Cohasset. I'm actually going to work their store. Um, my background was in retail, so if I'm talking to somebody about their banking or what their needs are in their banking, it's helpful to work their location and see what they do and what they need, how that their day works. I, I'll tell you, I think you're the first branch manager that I've ever heard in banking um, that has done something like that. And that's, that's, uh, un that's incredible that you actually get to experience what a customer's day-to-day uh, -day is. Well, I think it's important. And I, I've got a very good staff here. I can, I can, we've got four, four of us, so I can leave for three hours at a time yeah. and do things like that, get involved in the community, which is how the chamber came up. And, um, and I think they run hand in hand and they're linked. And um, especially in a small town like this, it's important to sort of be in it and not just in your office with the door shut. So that's, that's how I do it. And in banking is get to know your customer. I mean, there's a lot to be said about definitely you're getting to know your customer by knowing that. Absolutely. I mean, you find out what they do for work, where they live, um, how many kids they have, what those kids do for activities, and all of that is tied into a relationship. And then that ties into trust, and it's a trust job. So. Nothing like a small bank or smaller bank, um, you know, to get to know your customers and get to know what's going on as well as having that relationships. Mm -hmm. Which larger banks, it may be harder for them to do. It's impossible in a lot of ways. So we've, um, you know, we're... I think we're the third oldest bank in the state by six months. We were really the third oldest. 1834. There's a bank in Dedham and there's a bank in Marblehead that are six months older, and um, so it, they were they were form, formed in Hingham Square, um, about you know a hundred yards from where we are right now. Uh, and as you know, Cohasset was once part of Hingham, and it broke off 250 years ago, basically. And um, so we've, we've been here since 1995, but we've had Cohasset customers way before that. We've, we've got a lot of customers in Cohasset who 
tell me that they had their first pass book with us in 1955. <laughs> and, um, and that's good. That's, what, that's how we survive, is keeping that relationship going. Yeah, relationships are very important. The most important thing. Yeah. So what led you to become a branch manager? You said that you started your career in retail. So tell us a little bit you know, about that. Sure. Um, when I was 14... Um, we were in a family business in Hingham Square at the Nobles Camera, which everybody knows. We had a store in Cohasset that we opened in 69, and we had a store in Hingham Square we opened in 52. I came on in 83 when I was 14, and, um, and it was a, we were a hardworking family. Um, you, my high school graduation, I had to be at work by 1 o'clock that day. <laughs> And I got married on a Sunday because we had to work on Saturday. And that's how we were raised. That customer comes first. Yep, absolutely, <laughs> and, and, and the line. So um, Warren Noble was on the bank board at Hingham Savings, so I knew everybody at Hingham Savings pretty much my whole life. I knew who came, who went, who transferred. So we closed in October 14. So I think we locked, locked the door on a Friday night, and we did it intentionally to have the Saturday off as it ended. We didn't want to end it on a Saturday. And um, I started with the bank on Monday. So it was, um, you know, it was a smooth transition. And banking has turned into more retail. Um, just as at the store, I knew what families did and where they lived and what their vacations were all about. It's the same thing in banking. It's all about relationships. And um, so it, it doesn't really feel a whole lot different. It's just a different retail environment, but it's still retail-based. Um, so it's, it's all good. Yeah, it's all about the community and, uh, and the relationships that you have within that community. It sounds like you've established a, a lot of that in, um, since you know, you've been working um, at Nobles as well as here. Um, tell us a little bit about the Chamber of Commerce. So in Cohasset, the, it, the chain, I used to run the Hingham downtown. It was the Hingham Merchants Association at the time. And we did events. We did Christmas in the Square. We did um, Summerfest. And we did the Arts Walk and the Taste of Hingham event. And Cohasset's a smaller town. I think it has more community base to it because of its being smaller. Um, Hingham has three major shopping districts, Derby Street, uh, the Shipyard, and downtown. Cohasset has 3A, and it has the Village. So it's a much smaller group. I know most of the merchants out on 3A already, and um, so I just decided to take the chamber and model it after some of the things we did in Hingham. I model it after what works in Plymouth, because they've done a magnificent job building that downtown. And... Um, so we take what's tried and true and worked and try to incorporate it here. And um, so we're up to about 68 members right now. Wow. Uh, we've got restaurants in the village and on 3A that draw people in. And we're really networking with um, Instagram and Facebook. And now we have merchants sharing ideas. Uh, we have meetings. We work with the town. We have multiple liaisons in the town government and um, there's a big big channel of communication and that's the most important part of it so you're quite an innovator larry in terms of all the things that you've done not only you know the change to the uh, branch of the future or the, or the new branch model of uh, you know open environment not having those you know those desks in the front well having the desk now but not having the um what, what the were, counter the counters <laughs> And um, all the things that you've changed with the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, how, what you know? Have you always been this way? Have you always been an innovator and uh, tried new things? No, I'm good at copying what other people are successful <laughs> at. That's the main thing: is to watch what we did this in retail. Yeah. You 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 go to a trade show, you find out what somebody does that works, and you copy it, oh, yeah. and you give it your own name. <laughs> That's all. This is not this is not anything inventive. It's just watching what other people do things that succeed for them, and then finding a way to incorporate into our town. And, um, and that's all. It's, it's completely with the chamber. The, the fun part about the chamber is everything is new. 
if we we just did a big event this summer, which was different than an event they might have done five years ago. So in Hingham, the events are the same events year after year after year. So you, all that you're doing is pretty much taking last year's copy and running with it. Mm-hmm. Here we've sort of got to be creative, um, and and it's fun, and um, and we have new businesses coming into town. So what other events, uh, especially now with the upcoming 250th celebration of Cohasset, uh, are planned? Um, we are going to sit back for 2020 and basically be a support for the 250th. Mm-hmm. I don't want anything going on here that happens on the same day there's a 250th event. So we're very aware of what the 250th schedule is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have the parade. We're going to try to be support for the parade since it's going to come through the village. Mm-hmm. But we're, we're, you know, we're going to have stroll this year, which will be big. Um, there is a event New Year's Day on the Common with the 250th. It will be, a, um, I believe, ice skating on the Common, and there'll be ice sculptures and things like that. So um, that'll be coming up very soon. Uh, we're doing November 30th. We're having um, Small Business Saturday. If you go to the American Express Small Business Saturday website, we are listed as a town as a sponsor. So I've got the um, packets coming in for that. We're going to really do a big push for Small Business Saturday. Um, one of the other big things we're doing for Stroll, um, and once again, I'm, not, I'm probably reinventing the wheel. It's been done before. Um, we're doing a luminary bag. Oh. And what we're doing is we're trying to collect $10 for the bag. Um, we have a lot. Holiday Stroll costs about $10,000 to put on. Um, and we're trying to get lights. We're trying to get um, these bags. We're going to put them around the entire fountain on the common. It's going to take me about 300 bags to 400 bags to do that properly. So these are available in all the retail stores. They're $10. Um, we have all of the churches involved. Um, you can dedicate a bag. So when you, when you buy a bag for $10, you fill out a dedication form. That will be stapled on the bag when it goes around the, on the, around the fountain, and um, we'll have a tea light inside, which will blow over. So um, we discussed it at a, at a chamber meeting, and it was decided that we would do a can drive. So we're going to do a can drive for the food pantry. The can will go in the bag to weigh it down, and the candle will sit on top of the can. Oh, that's a great so idea. That, that Serves two purposes. Exactly. And then we'll, we'll for, if we can get 600 bags out there, we'll get 600 cans to go with it. Wow. That's, um, that's the plan. That's great for the Cohasset Food Pantry. And Absolutely. it's going to be beautiful to have the luminaires uh, in a common. Mm-hmm. And we're going to, if we have extra, we're going to put them along Main Street. Um, we just had the walkway next to French Memories that leads to Elm Street mm-hmm. all redone. And we're going to put some surprise things for Christmas in that walkway to connect Elm Street to Main Street. Yeah. Oh, the kids are going to love that. Yeah. So if you want to join the Chamber of Commerce, can you tell our viewers uh, how would you go about doing that and finding out information about what's going on with the Chamber of Commerce? So everything on the Chamber is at CohassetChamber.org. Okay. Uh, we are a nonprofit. We have a Facebook page. We have Instagram. Um, we're probably in the next year, it's going to morph into something more of a... I don't know, a, a pin board of sort for the town. So if you want to know what's going on somewhere, there's one place you can look to see the whole town in one perspective view mm-hmm. rather than looking at the library or the historical society. So we're getting the businesses now starting to share information mm-hmm. that they want us to put up for them because there'll be more views on our site probably than, more than an individual site. And um, you know, if that's what it becomes, that's what a chamber of commerce should be. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I, I think it's different in every town. And in this town, we, we could be the place to facilitate, you know, um, everyone looking to see what events are going on. Uh, we, it, it's endless what we could do with it. Oh. And uh, I think you mentioned earlier uh, you have over 3,000. Um, how, many, how many individuals have access to the website now? How many members do you have in the website? Um, it, it gets, I mean, we put up the holiday stroll, save the date in August, yes. right after the summer event. And we were, I think, in sometime in 
October, we were at about 30,000 views. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So, and we, we put it out there in other towns. Yeah. Um, you know, as much as I'd like it just to be a Cohasset only, uh, the restaurants, the stores aren't going to survive if it's only Cohasset residents shopping. They have to, they have to bring people in. Yeah. And I ran retail. I used to bring people from north of Boston. Mm -hmm. And um, so we need visitors to come into town to see the town, to spend a day, to eat, and, you know, we're trying to find a way to connect Cohasset through, you know, the Freedom Trail in Boston, Hingham, down 3A into Cohasset as they drive to Plymouth to visit Plymouth and then to Cape Cod. Yeah. Um, we want that to be a 3A drive, not a Route 3 drive. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's, that's going to be our plan going ahead. There's so much beauty in that drive in terms of the seaside as well as the individual towns and the town centers. Absolutely, and that's that we're going to try to, uh, one of our big selling points in this town is uh, the downtown, the fact that Cohasset has businesses on 3A mm -hmm. and um, in, in their, their vital businesses to the town's success and people shop them mm -hmm. and, um, and, and to do the 3A belt down to Plymouth. And it's a nice ride. And having a, a company like yours, like Kingham Institution for Savings, uh, helps uh, in terms of economically as well. I mean, you know, with loans as well as with, uh, you know, customer accounts, right? Yeah, I mean, one of our one of our big things we we, we, we sort of profess ourselves as stewards of this bank. Mm -hmm. The bank will long outlive us, and one thing we try to do is to to be a community bank. We don't have any fees. We don't have any charges. Um, we try to give the best interest rates we possibly can, but you know, a, a checking account, we don't charge for the checks. We don't charge for anything. We even, when people... What, what about ATMs? <laughs> we give the debit card fees back. Oh, see, I like that. I like that. Yeah, so if, I understand that in my branch in Cohasset, I don't have a drive up. I have, you know, stone stairs going up to the ATM. So if I have somebody that calls and says, you know, I, I have to go to the ATM on 3A somewhere. That's fine. Go get your money. That's more important. The $3 fee you get, we give you that money back. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. So the website for the Cohasset Chamber of Commerce, what is that? It's CohassettChamber.org. Okay. So remember, listeners, CohassettChamber.org. Correct. So, Larry, is there anything else that you wanted to share with our viewers and our listeners? Um, no, just that I, we'd like everybody to come out for holiday stroll. The other thing is on it's Saturday, December 7th from 5 to 8 p.m. And in the morning, the churches have their craft fair. Very, very, very important to come to both. It's, it, uh, the, the, the best spin I can put on it is, is it's, it's 4th of July. You go to the parade in the morning, the fireworks at night. The churches depend on this craft fair. For their finances and I well, the last thing I wanted was to have stroll which it's it's a Saturday night so the seventh is the night we can't do the 14th it's too late and we want people to come out to the craft fair there's a lot going on in the common go home at two o'clock come back at five and we'll have Santa on a fire truck coming through the village and it will all be lit up Sounds like a wonderful day. So, Larry, we want to thank you so much for all you do for the town of Cohasset, uh, for the chamber and all the different merchants, as well as all the individuals in the Cohasset community. Thank you for your service to us. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me, Claudia. This is Claudia Russell with Cohasset Beacons and Larry Corthell, and thank you all for joining us.